Now, Moscow has accused Western powers of stirring up tensions in the Arab world by calling for the overthrow of the Syrian regime. Now, let's get more on this from an author and journalist, Webster Tarpley, now joining us live from Damascus. Uh, thank you for coming on the program today. So Russia says that calls uh, from certain states that the Syrian opposition should avoid talks with the government are only provoking further violence. Just for a moment here, uh, let's listen to what the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has said. In Syria, we're now seeing a situation where the Arab League is calling for a halt to violence and the beginning of dialogue. And Western countries and the capitals of some countries of the region are making calls to the contrary, expressly recommending the opposition hold no talks with the Assad regime. It looks like a political provocation on an international scale. Yes, violence has to be stopped, but this demand has to be addressed to the authorities and the armed groups in the Syrian opposition. So, uh, so what, what, what's, uh, what's your take on this? Do, do you agree that the calls coming from the West are, are not helping to stabilize the situation in the region? Uh, surely not. Certainly, Mr. Mr. Lavrov is on very firm ground there. I've just completed about a one-week uh, fact-finding tour of the country. I've been in Homs, I've been in Tartus, Banyas, I've been in the military hospital here in, in Baghdad, and I can tell you what, uh, what uh, average, everyday Syrians of all ethnic groups, Christian, Alawite, Sunni, Shiite, Druze, uh, what they say about this is that they are being shot at by snipers. Um, in Homs in particular, people complained that there are terrorist snipers who are shooting at civilians, men, women and children, blind terrorism, random killing, uh, simply for the purpose of destabilizing the country. Uh, I, I think th I would not call this a civil war by any stretch of the imagination. I think that's a, that's a very, very uh, misleading term in the following sense. What you're dealing with here are death squads. You're dealing here with terror commandos, the kind of thing that everybody remembers from Argentina and the uh, Central America. This is a typical CIA method. In this case, it's a joint production of CIA, MI6, Mossad, the DGSE of the French. It's got money coming from Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Qatar. And it has a couple of interesting managers. Um, the manager I think you should point to perhaps most is a guy called Khadam. Khadam was the foreign minister in this country for m quite a couple of decades. He's almost 80 years old. He operates from Paris. And I think he's being groomed by, by NATO as the new dictator of some Mr. kind Tarpley, of Mr. Tarpley, I'm sorry to interrupt you. If I could just jump in for a moment. It, it's very interesting how you bring in the, the issue of that there are, there are uh, unknown snipers, there are terror commandos, uh, death squads with, with, uh, with links uh, to the West and the West, uh, West's allies in Saudi Arabia, for example. But Assad's rule is increasingly being called illegitimate. But isn't the, the, Euro, the, the U.S. and that of Europe a concern that getting rid of the Syrian president could just cause even more violence? For example, what we're seeing right now in Tahrir Square in Egypt. Well, after, after Libya becoming a bloodbath with 150,000 dead, and now with Egypt showing what it was all along, there was no revolution there. It was a complete failure, and now people are beginning to, to understand it. Notice that, nevertheless, uh, Mrs. Clinton and Ms. Rice at the United Nations are continuing to push this bankrupt, discredited model of the color revolution, the CIA people power coup, backed up by terrorist troops, uh, people from Al-Qaeda, people from the Muslim Brotherhood, people from Salafist organizations and, and so forth. And uh, I, I've heard this now from some very important religious authorities here. There's a growing movement inside the Islamic community here which says we want uh, reconciliation, we want law and order, we want legality, we don't want fat fanatics to run the show. The fanatics are being brought in by the Western powers. So the, so the, fanat so the, the fanatics are coming in by, by, by the Western powers. You're seeing a, a fair amount of unification yes. among the Muslims there. But let's, I mean, let's, let's draw some comparisons, if we may. Uh, UN Resolution 1973 for Libya to protect civilians there. Do you think, is the grand plan here for Syria, uh, that of the Western, Western states, to get in there for regime in Syria? And if that is their plan, then what is the point? What is there to gain? Very, very important thing is that this is the most tolerant society in the Middle East. This is one place where all kinds of people live together in, I think, remarkable harmony. And again, it's a, it's a very wide variety. Muslims of, the, of all kinds, Christians of all kinds, right? Christian, uh, Greek Orthodox, 
uh, Greek Catholics, Melkites, Syriacs, uh, many, many other kinds, Druzes, Kurds, uh, and so forth. This is a model of the peaceful coexistence of various ethnic groups. Now, the U.S. policy, I think right now, is to smash the Middle East according to ethnic lines. In other words, if you can have a divide and conquer policy which says the, Le the Christians will be kicked out of Lebanon and the Christians will be, say, kicked out of Syria in the way that they have been kicked out of, of Iraq, and ironically, a lot of them went to Syria. You can, you can get a, a situation where all of these countries are, are fatally weakened. Um, the way in which it's introduced is if you look at Syria, the main centers of trouble are on the Turkish border, the Syrian uh, border with uh, Jordan, with Iraqi Kurdistan, and then with Lebanon. And I think Lebanon, thanks to Saad Hariri, may be the main one. It, but it's I'm, a, I'm sorry, it's a completely we are running very, very long time here. We're running, I'm so sorry, we are running a long time. But if I may, with, with, with Western powers calling for restraint uh, on both sides in Egypt, why do they only take a one-sided approach when it comes to what's going on in Syria? Well, this is, it's all the tactics of demagogy and the, the modulation of demagogy from one, one minute to the next. But what, what we have here in, in Syria is a cynical media campaign, because I've, I've been in Homs. When you go to Homs and you go to the Zara neighborhood, which is supposed to be the hottest point in the whole country, you find people who are pro-Assad. They're concerned, number one, about mazout. They want to have heating oil because the winter is coming and it's getting cold. And you ask them, what is your demand? They say, we want the Syrian army to come in here. We want the Syrian army posted on the roofs of the houses with helicopters and tanks. Stop these snipers from killing us. Don't let these, these black uh, hooded figures, which is what they are, uh, pretending to be deserters when they're really maybe from Chechenia, they're from uh, Libya, they're from uh, Afghanistan or Pakistan. Foreign fighters have been brought in here by the CIA and the other Western services. And that is what's going on. And that is, I think, a very, very large part of it. Uh, and in, in the city of Homs, for example, in one hospital, they were telling us it was five dead and seven wounded on one day. And what was it? It's all snipers. It's all these terrorists who are shooting the civilian population. Of course, when Al Jazeera arrives, they say, oh, those, those deaths are the responsibility of the Syrian army. That is absolute baloney. This is a Goebbels big lie campaign. There is no civil war here. There is no insurrection. There is no mass political movement against Assad. These are very, very limited, minor, strictly localized uh, phenomena. There's, this looks nothing like Libya. I know what a civil war in a modern Arab country looks like. I've been in Libya during the summer. There's no civil war here. There's no Tarpley, front. As you, say, there, there's, as you say, there's no civil war here. As, as you are suggesting, this is simply a bout of a terror commanders and death squads being uh, imported by the yes. exported by the CIA and brought in by other Western factions, but I'm afraid I wish we had more time for this. Uh, author and journalist Webster sure. Tarpley, live from Damascus, many thanks. Thank you.